today I'd like to talk to you about a puzzling material whose discoverer was ridiculed when he found it, but in the end, he got the Nobel Prize. Hi, my name is Anissa Ramirez. Welcome to my lab at Yale University. I'd like to share with you quasicrystals, but in order to understand quasicrystals, we have to think about space and how patterns fill space. When you go into a bathroom, you'll find tiles on the wall in a repeating pattern. It's their shapes that allow them to cover all the space. Some of the tiles may be square, some of them may be rectangular. All of them cover all the space. Atoms, too, must arrange themselves in a repeating fashion, just like these tiles. But they have to do it in three directions. We call them crystals. These crystals also must cover all the space, and there mustn't be any gaps. Nature doesn't like gaps. The tiles in the bathrooms, not only do they have repeating patterns, but they also have to have symmetry, meaning that one side looks like the other side. This square tile has fourfold symmetry. If I rotate it 90 degrees, it will look exactly the same. There are other shapes with other types of symmetries as well. A triangle has threefold symmetry, a rectangle has twofold symmetry, and a hexagon has sixfold symmetry. Atoms have these symmetries as well. What you will not find in a bathroom are tiles that have fivefold symmetry or pentagons, because when they're arranged like this, we will have space. And once again, we don't want space. Pentagons are forbidden arrangements for atoms as well, or so we thought, until Daniel Sheckman found a crystal with one of these forbidden arrangements. He wrote up his results, put it in a journal. It was ridiculed. No one believed him. He had to work hard to convince many scientists of what he found, this new discovery. Eventually, with time, he got the reward of a Nobel Prize. So why are these materials so neat? Well, they change everything. You see, we use atomic arrangements to understand properties of materials, how strong a material will be, how well electricity passes through it. Metals are generally great conductors of electricity. However, a quasi-crystal metal is not. It's an insulator. That's completely different. Also, steels are very strong materials. Quasi-crystal steels are much, much stronger. And we don't know why. There's much still to learn about these materials. What we know for certain is that these quasicrystals break all the rules, and with them, they usher in new materials with weird properties. The Nobel Prize tells us that the way that we understand materials will never be the same. I'm Anissa Ramirez. Thank you for joining me in my lab at Yale University. And I hope you'll join us for another material marvel.